welcome, everyone. Uh, if you're here for, uh, I hope you're here for building Google for Criminal Enterprises. If not, feel free to go. Um, if you don't know what that is, if you've never used the internet, my name's uh, Anthony Russell, and you can reach me at .net Russell. It's a Twitter handle. Um, there's my Twitter, Twitter profile, uh, my blog. I usually don't like to do in-depth speaking or in-depth uh, about my profiles because no one cares. Um, things we're going to cover today, uh, how and why this project was started, uh, what I, how I define public data and where you can find it, uh, how we can scrape some public data and how we can scrape uh, some social media data, uh, and then how to link those together, uh, who cares about this and why, and what would I do to fix it? And I also have a tool that I'm releasing today that uh, I put on GitHub this morning, so you'll be able to download it. Uh, so here's the disclaimer. Uh, we're going to be looking at some sensitive information today. Uh, I would appreciate it if you did not harass the people that are in my slides. I'm using real information. These are straight from the tool. Uh, they don't deserve to be harassed, uh, and I don't, condone, I don't condone doing illegal things with this information, uh, my material, or my research. Uh, that said, Everything that's in here is public information. It's been put out by these people. It's been put out either by them or by the government on their behalf. Uh, and if I were to redact this information from my slides, I feel like it wouldn't have the impact that I intended originally when I started this project. Uh, I wrestled with this for quite some time about releasing this tool and this information because uh, I don't want somebody to get hurt based on it. But if we want things to change, we really want things to change, then we need to, we need to put this out there. We need to show people what, what can really be done. And on that note, like, this is just the beginning. This is just scratching the surface. This is stuff that I put together in my free time. You know, if, if you're a nation state or somebody that really wants to do harm, you could really do a lot with this. Um, also, I talked to an attorney, so don't sue me, bro. All right, so uh, why this project? So about uh, six or seven months ago, I started looking into uh, being able to have a public profile. I like to do public speaking at different conferences. Um, I want to be able to have a public profile uh, for conferences and for a living resume for work. I'm sure a lot of you professionals like to have your resume online so other companies might be able to find it. Um, but that's a challenge because, you know, I don't want my data rated. So, uh, you know, how do you keep a public profile without, um, how do you keep a public profile without, you know, putting too much out there? Uh, so, as we spoke about before I, get st I got started, I'm, a, you know, I'm an OIF vet. I like to take challenges head on, so uh, I wasn't about to you know, just, just let this go. So, some of the things I started to do uh, to try and make myself private on the web was I opted out of all the things, like everything I could find. I looked for an opt-out page, uh, all the uh, big data farms, like everything, Intellisys, all that stuff. Um, I actually cut those slides out of here because I, I could have gone on for like three or four slides on things I've opted out of. If you go on the GitHub, uh, it has all the links in there in the slide deck. You can just click them and opt out yourself. Uh, I scrub my social media, uh, but unfortunately, even after you scrub it, they still hold on to that information. Um, you might not be visible to your friends, and it might not be visible to my tool, but it's still out there. Uh, so, what I had, <laughs> so what I decided to do was I decided to muddy the water a little bit. I put a fake name. I said I was born in 1901, said I was a girl. You know, you just change everything, and then eventually that muddies the water, and they don't know what's real. Uh, I scrubbed all my old email accounts against uh, uh, Have I Been Pwned. Have you guys seen that site? I'm sure a lot of you have. I put that in there, see if any of my old emails were released at all. Uh, I got rid of old ones. I registered for the Do Not Call list. Uh, I went through my phone and uninstalled every app that uh, required any weird, wonky permissions. Uh, so there's really, it, that's pretty sanitized at this point. Um, by the way, if you use the Facebook or Twitter app or the Facebook Messenger, that's like giving them access to your whole phone. Uh, and then I also researched cleanup services. There's a lot of those on the web, and they're all garbage. Don't use them. Uh, so I opted out of all the things. And unfortunately, it didn't work. Like six months later, I'm still getting dick enhancement pills. So it's like, it doesn't, doesn't work. <laughs> Don't waste your time. Yeah, both. Yeah. Yes, the pills do not work. Stay away from those. <laughs> so uh, I figured, you know, maybe I needed a different approach. Um, and then I got this idea. I said, you know what, maybe if I build a tool that does what they do, uh, but abuses the data instead of selling it for profit, because that's what a lot of them do, then maybe we can fix this problem. So 
uh, that's when I started my search for public data. Um, so public data, as I define it, is data that can be made public either by the local or state or federal governments, uh, data that can be collected from social media such as Twitter, LinkedIn, and uh, Facebook, and uh, data, uh, data that can be collected from APIs like the People API. Is anybody familiar with the People API? I'm sure if you're in this room, some of you are probably familiar with it. It's a, it's a really nice tool. Uh, they re actually, they recently changed their API. You used to be able to use sample underscore key to get everything. Uh, and in the last week, they updated their API to where you have to actually do a CAPTCHA and register a key uh, or to get a new key. Uh, and it's IP-based. But unfortunately for them, uh, you can just uh, create a fake email account through like Yandex and register and get 30 free trials, and you can just do that all day. So um, sucks. They 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 want to offer free trial, but it doesn't really work. Um, so government data, as I define it, here's some here's some of the sources that I looked at. I looked at the voter database. Um, there's quite a bit in here: full name, date of birth, current address, party affiliation. There's actually 99, about 99 columns. I put 99 in there. I think that's what I counted. Um, there could be more or less by a few. Uh, property records. So if you buy a house, or um, yeah, basically if you buy a house uh, in at least in Ohio, all that information is public. Uh, I'm sure it's the same in most states. Uh, traffic violations, if you get a ticket, your, your information's out there. Full name, date of birth, current address. You can just go to the county website and research traffic violations. Uh, register your pet. I don't know. I, I have a dog, and uh, I, I don't feel like just because I have a dog, my information should be out there, but apparently it is. And uh, car registration. I put a question mark next to this. I'm hoping somebody that watches this can help me. I bought a car earlier this year. And uh, you know, I'm super conscious about what information I let out there and what I sign up for. I didn't sign up for anything, and I started getting a ton of stuff with my exact car make and model in the mail. So there must be some type of, yeah. Did, did, oh, is that what it is? OK. So yeah, the, there's some, some public source out there that, that people are able to scrape and then offer you, you know, shitty fake warranties. Um, I would love to incorporate something like that in the future. But I couldn't figure that one out, so I left it out. Uh, these are the ones I didn't use in my tool. Uh, I didn't use the property records, traffic violations, or pet registration, mainly because, one, uh, I had all that information that they offered other than the specifics of the traffic violation in, in the voter database already. And two, because all of these are very specific to the county, so I would have to write a tool that would scrape every county site individually, and I didn't want the state, you know, issuing their pants that I was scraping every county site. Um, so I ended up going with the Ohio Voter Registration Database. Um, so from, I, I spoke with the Secretary of State CIO, and he told me that uh, these are, um, that it's, it's a common format across all states. So uh, theoretically, if you had another state, New York, you know, Nevada, whatever, um, and you were able to download their database, it would work in my tool. Uh, so uh, I just used Ohio because it made it super easy, and they let you download uh, six and a half million records. In fact, uh, I downloaded the six and a half million uh, a few months ago. They update this every week. So uh, this is constantly updated um, with uh, new people that register and stuff. So that's kind of scary. Um, but yeah, I I'll have the links uh, at the, uh, uh, I'll have the links in a, in a blog post afterwards if you guys want to get the links for that. It's also in the tool. Uh, here's an example of some of the data that's in the voter database. Uh, so you get voter ID, county number, county ID, first, last, middle, date of birth, registration date, voter status, all types of stuff. There's a lot of fun things you can do with just the database. Um, you can search for young people near me and then filter out young women and then be a predator. Or you can search for um, elderly people for me and you know go around and fish their you know, social security checks out of their mailbox. I know that's been a problem for a while. So just with the voter database, you can do that kind of stuff. Um, I, I don't condone that, but you know that's what they're putting out there. So now that we have our seed data, we can start getting the personal data. Uh, some of the sources of personal data that I looked at was Facebook, which offers uh, a slew of things, interest, current city, state, original city, and state, relationships, degree, uh, and schools attended, and jobs. Uh, Twitter, I tried to find a way to correlate to this. I really did, but it's like people put, I put random shit on there. I don't use my real name half the time. So like current thoughts, I don't know. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, that's a wealth of information. I'm actually going to write a plug-in for that. Um, I just didn't have time to do it for DEF CON. I'll have it done for DerbyCon. Uh, the People API, it's everything. 
Uh, if you've seen the People API, you know that. If not, it has like phone numbers. I'll demonstrate it here in a minute. It has phone numbers and relationships and every address you've lived at, every name, every alias you've gone by. Uh, and then Instagram. You know, I didn't incorporate Instagram, but uh, in some of my early research, I actually I did it in a blog post. I was able to abstract some detailed information about a target uh, just from Instagram uh, based on like where they like to go shop and where they like to eat and some of the social activities they're involved in, like jazz band and soccer and where they played at, and uh, just based on Instagram. So that's also a great target. Uh, so now we're going to look into scraping Facebook. Uh, a couple things to know about scraping Facebook is, one, it is a violation of their terms of service. So if you get caught doing it, they will ban you. Uh, they didn't ban me yet, but I'm using a fake profile, so good luck. <laughs> Uh, and then also uh, their data comes back when you try and scrape it. They, they do some things to try and, I'm sure it wasn't to try and mitigate people scraping, maybe it was. Uh, but they do some things that, uh, that make it a little more difficult to scrape. Uh, does anybody know what Ajax is? I don't know if we have any developers, any engineers in the room. So uh, Ajax will, it, it kind of speeds up the way the page loads. It's like a trick to the eye. Um, so the page will load and it'll be a container. And then as that container loads, it'll go out and make another request uh, for the actual data. So if you're trying to scrape, uh, a lot of tools will just get you that container and you won't get the actual data. So um, it makes it a little more challenging, but I found ways around it. Uh, it's, it's not too hard. Uh, Facebook elements can be scraped by focusing on automation strings. Does anybody know what an automation string is? So uh, Facebook, like any other big company, they want to be able to test their software. Um, so they put these little ID tags on every element, and then they're able to write other programs that look through the page for those IDs, and then they can put in fake data or put in real data, and they can check values, um, and they leave that in their production environment. So we're able to use that to scrape with. We can say, go get me all of the info fields, and you can get their work, you know, where they work, and their education, and all that stuff. Um, and that's, that's the technique I'm going to show here in a second. Um, also, I use multipass scraping. It makes it a little bit easier, so I'll, I'll go through it multiple times. Uh, so one thing to note real quick about Facebook is the, this query right here, uh, search slash people, uh, and then the little Q is the, uh, is the query. Um, so unauthenticated, I've only noticed that you'll get prompted with a capture once. It may be more than that. I've run this thousands and thousands of times. Uh, if you're authenticated, though, you can run this endlessly without a captcha ever. So if you create a fake Facebook account, you can just run this query over and over and over and again. And what's fun about it is I can search for John Smith in Ohio, and it'll go get me everybody in Ohio that their name is John Smith. Um, it works really well. So here's an example of that. Uh, this is what it'll return. And what the tool does and what we want to do is we want to get the links out of here, because uh, obviously the names are hyperlinks, so we want to grab those. So how do we do that? Well. Uh, these are the tools that I tried to do that with. I tried using curl and wget and links, because uh, I, I really didn't want to write this in, uh, in, in anything that I couldn't run in the terminal. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. Um, I tried the WPF web browser. It wasn't very, uh, it, it was limited on function calls. So I ended up going with the WinForms browser. Fun thing about WinForms browser, uh, it has a memory link in the, uh, a memory leak in the, uh, you know when you have your browser open and you have the back button? Well, it keeps a, it keeps a log of everything that you've done. Well, when you uh, navigate like 10,000 times, that back button doesn't empty out ever. Like the, the history cache doesn't ever empty out. And it took me forever to figure this out. But yeah, there's a memory leak in there. So what I had to do was I wrote a separate application that all it did was take a URL as a command parameter and then it dumped the source out. And then in my application, I just spin up one instance of it get the source, and then close it. And then that kind of solved the memory leak issue. But they're never going to fix that, so that was my workaround. Um, here's an example. Does anybody know what a regex is? Regexes are kind of like magic. Uh, you really shouldn't use them for web scraping, but you know why not? It's a hacker conference. So uh, this is a really basic example of the regex that I use over and over and over again. I am not a regex pro. Um, I, I'm really not a regex pro, not at all. Uh, but this is the example. So there's three parts to it. I use a positive look behind, which I'll show you what each of these mean in here in a second. I use a positive look behind. I match zero to unlimited with, uh, and I make it lazy so it grabs just the minimum amount. And then I use a positive look ahead. 
and uh, this is what it actually looks like. So this is the positive look behind, and you see that pink little dot right there? That's saying that, okay, this is, this is where we're going we're gonna to start. And then when we add in the uh, period asterisk, it grabs everything to the end of the line. And then I add a question mark, and it makes it lazy, so it grabs as few as possible. And then I add the positive look ahead, which you can't see it, but it, it's marking the end there by the uh, less than symbol and the uh, forward slash. So what ultimately what that does, that regex will do, is it'll go through, and everything that matches that regex, it'll grab me the text for it. So that's how I use to get uh, actually all the information. Here's an example of how I grab the, uh, the URLs off of the search, the query page. Um, so I use the, I, I'm not going to go too deep into this because it's, it's kind of crazy, but uh, right here you can see the uh, data test ID. This is something they would use to be testing with. I'm guessing this is their automation ID. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, but it was unique, so I used that. And uh, as it grabs the center part right here. You can see there's the data test ID SERP result. This is actually, this is the real code. Um, and then, you know, I, I looked for div A H R E F. So div A H R E F. And then it, that would be where the pink line is right there. So this is the target information. This is what I want to grab off of a profile. And I mean, if I'm doing this with an unknown amount of profiles for unknown people, you've got to use regex. So I use something uh, I, I like to refer to as multi-pass uh, scraping. So I'll grab all the source, and then I'll get chunks out of what I want, and then I'll run regexes over those chunks. So I use three passes to get the, uh, to get the profile information. This is like where the person worked and where they studied and things like that. Um, so real quick, here's the first pass. The first pass will get everything in blue. Now the blue is... Um, this is each of those blocks. So you can see the first one says it's their high school, and the second one says it's the electronic classroom tomorrow, and the third one is it's probably their, their location, where they're from. Uh, and that's ultimately what I want to get. So right now I have the blue, blue chunks. So then we run another regex over it. And this regex cuts it down even more. And as you can see, we still have our data in here that we're trying to abstract, uh, but we have a lot less. So this is the second chunk that we have now. And then finally, in the last chunk, it's real easy. We just look for the, uh, um, let's see, we look for the uh, greater than symbol right there. And there's only one greater, greater than symbol in the chunk, so it's easy to grab the data. And then I add that to a list in the application, and we can use that for analysis. So now that we have it, let's start analyzing it and figuring out if we have our target. Um, so I, I'm going to use a different example. This is actually a full example, uh, and this is real data, so please don't harass this person. Uh, so I'm going to use a result from the voter database, uh, and then I'm going to look at a series of Facebook profiles that could possibly be that person, and we're going to try and uh, match them up to find the actual person. Uh, so this is our target. Um, her name is Samantha Adkins. She's 18. She's from Lakewood, Ohio. Um, I got this just by querying for 18-year-olds in Lakewood, and I found one on a street. Uh, there were a number of results, but you can do this in any city, and you should be able to do this with any state. Uh, and then I ran that query, uh, our Facebook query for Samantha Atkins. The plus symbols are just spaces. I don't, a lot of devs know that, but if you're not a dev, that's all it is. It's just a space. You can use, I think you can use percent %20 in this, too. I think that'll work. Um, it should. But these are the results we got. Uh, each of these is a profile that we scraped off the page using those regexes. All right. And uh, now we want to dig into the, each of those profiles, and we want to see if that's our person. So we got to scrape the details off. So we're assuming we're scraping the details off. Uh, this is actually kind of super arbitrary. I don't know if you, uh, did anybody read the uh, 2600 article I wrote? I, I, yeah, OK, so the, uh, this is super arbitrary. All right, I just uh, I messed with the scores until I got back really good results. So if somebody way smarter than me, which is probably everybody, uh, can come up with something better, please let me know. I would love to actually have like a really good algorithm for this. But um, I look at the profile, and I say, OK, if the first name exists, they get 0.15. If the last name exists, they get 0.15. And then uh, one of these three cases down here will be true. Either they'll, the city and state will be found, and they'll get 0.7. Or just the state is found, they get 0.1. Or just the city is found, and they get 0.4. Uh, and then that builds a confidence score. 
and we're able to identify targets with it. So as you can see, all those profiles, we have 0 0.41, 0 0.41, 0 0.41, 42, 43, and then 1.02. So that is a really strong match. And if we look at it, um, you can see that Samantha Atkins from Lakewood, Ohio. And uh, this is very likely our target. So um, based on this, what do we know about our target now? So we have her full legal name, we have her home address, we have her date of birth, we have photos of her, we know her interests, we have her relationship status, we know who her, her partner is, uh, and a slew of other information. Uh, but we can actually do more than that. We can do a lot more. Uh, that was a simple example. That was something that, that was originally what I wanted to demo as my project. Uh, but then I started thinking, you know, like a bad guy, and I said, well, you know, what if I really wanted to do damage with this? Um, it's one thing to be able to walk down the road and say, oh, yeah, you know, so-and-so lives there. But, you know, what if uh, we started with Facebook and used their search tools and then worked backwards and try and resolve, you know, people that way? Uh, so, you know, what if we search for people that work for things like the USPS or the Cleveland Police Department or the Cleveland Fire Department or the Perry Nuclear Power Plant or the Ohio National Guard? Or one of other one of another million you know possible uh, you know uh, places that people would probably not want you to know they lived. And so I'm going to demo a tool that I've been working on. Uh, it's it's definitely not a final tool yet. I'm going to keep working on it. Um, but let's see here. You probably won't be able to see some of the text. It's okay. That's not important. Um, the first thing I'm going to demo is the uh, the database searching. So with this, uh, this is just, I mean, it's, it's just an interface to the database. I'm going to search for uh, people that were born after 1998. Uh, we're going to choose uh, a street here. All right, I'm going to hit search, and hopefully it works. Um, I have videos if it doesn't work, don't worry. Uh, the Wi-Fi is kind of wonky. So... What it's doing is it's searching a database that I have uh, recreated in Azure. Uh, I downloaded it from the Ohio uh, Secretary of State website. And uh, as you see here, we get a number of results. Uh, and these are all people that are uh, right around 18 that live, on, um, that live on Clifton in Lakewood, Ohio. So uh, I, pull, I made a couple notes here because I didn't want to accidentally show like minors and things. So. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Julia Alvarez here. Let's try her. So this is the application opening up, spawning a browser, and now it's searching Facebook. Uh, there must be two profiles that came back. And as you can see, Julia Alvarez came back with a score of 1.04. And if we visit the page, uh, that's Julia Alvarez from Lakewood, Ohio, Lakewood High School. So we have all this information. And uh, in a matter of seconds, we've managed to find an 18-year-old that lives on a street could be your street, uh, and we know their personal information. Uh, we have a Facebook link to it. Uh, so that was originally what the project was about, but then I would, you know, that was kind of easy to do, so I wanted to go a little bit further. So uh, this is, you probably, if anybody uses Facebook, you'll recognize this is the Find Friends page. Uh, I just embedded it right in my application. And you'll notice over here on the right, they have the Search for Friends, um, the Search for Friends search criteria. So I'm going to search for something like Perry Nuclear Power. Uh, if you don't know, Perry Nuclear Power Plant is a nuclear power plant in the state of Ohio. Um, and people register it as their workplace. That's critical infrastructure. Uh, Perry, uh, nuclear power plants have been in the news recently as uh, targets of opportunity for foreign agents, um, for phishing campaigns, trying to get credentials, identity theft, a number of other things. So uh, I've, I've got my results here. I'm going to click this button up here at the top that says click here to import into Alohomora. And we get this result back. So these are all the people over here on the left. And uh, we can just, uh, let's choose this guy. And let's scrape his Facebook information. So that pulls down his Facebook information, Jason Weeks from Ashtabula, Ohio. Uh, and it's a little broken. So a uh, quick story about the jobs thing up here. Uh, I was trying to actually break down the different uh, details confidently, like what they were. And uh, I had the bright idea to use the uh, ID of the image, because uh, if you look at the Facebook profile, 
Um, like we can open it up here and I can take a look. So if we look at uh, Jason Weeks' profile here, uh, you can see the little suitcase. I said, oh, well, those images are probably unique. I wonder if I could just use the idea of those images and know that what's in that column is a job. Uh, but it keeps breaking. I, I think they're changing the IDs randomly every so often. Uh, so I have to figure out a way around that. But the good news is we still have all the de details and we can still use it. So we just scraped his information. We see that uh, he works at Perry Nuclear Power Plant. Uh, he was in the Navy. We see what school we went to. We also see his uh, girlfriend or wife's name, his spouse's name. Uh, we can search the voter database and see if there's any information there on him. Uh, and that should bring back a result. So as you can see, we get his home address now and his age. And then uh, I also built in a module for the People API. And I tested it this morning, so I hope it works. OK. Well, we get a bunch of results back uh, for the different people. Now, we would have to dig through this. Uh, it depends on the person that you're pulling back, uh, whether or not it's him. I don't think that's him. <laughs> um, it depends on the person you're, you're pulling back on what information you get. Uh, this one has been kind of wonky. I don't know if people's messing with me or not, because I've searched this guy like a million times at this point. So I don't know if they're just trying to like <laughs> send me back a ton of results. Uh, we can use this lady here. I think she comes back pretty well. Uh, this is another one. So obviously that's not her. That's probably her son. But she also works at Perry Nuclear Power Plant. Um, yeah, that's her last name. So let's go ahead and search the voter database. See if that brings anything back. Uh, we can also search the People API and see if anything res returns from that. But the, I guess the, the point that I'm trying to make with this is that, um, so that's probably her right there. Yeah, so as you can see, she's got a picture of her son in there. And um, we, can, we can definitely abstract some, a ton of information uh, using these methods. Now, like I said, this is just a demo. This isn't something that I meant to put in here uh, as a, a tool that I, I want people to go use. Uh, I'm just trying to highlight a point that uh, with these methods, we can build detailed target profiles uh, for phishing campaigns or for identity theft uh, for a number of things that are nefarious. So Mr. Shelton here, see we get his home address. I don't think that's him. <laughs> but we would be able to find him. He's in here. Yeah, it's not him. <laughs> but the point is, we can do it. So let's head back over to the slides really quick. All right, so uh, who cares? Well, uh, I would hope that these people that I presented today care, for one. Um, I know that. When I was in the military, uh, especially when I was stateside, I was a police officer, I did not want uh, anybody knowing where I lived for obvious reasons, right? You know, if you give somebody a DUI, you don't want them to be able to figure out where you live and come firebomb your house. It's probably not a good thing. Uh, or have your phone numbers and harass you or one of a million scenarios. Uh, that's just the local stuff. What about the critical infrastructure, the nuclear power plant? We saw the details we can get from that. Uh, I don't want foreign agents being able to uh, fish critical infrastructure. Like, that shouldn't be a thing. But it is. Uh, what else? Uh, I mean, plotting troop movements. So we can do that with the National Guard and the Army. We can figure out where our troops are, uh, figure out where their families live. Uh, does anybody know what FRG is? Anybody? Raise your hand if you know what FRG is. No one? All right. I was trying, I was trying to weed out the feds. All right. FRG is Family Readiness Group. I, I, I wanted to save this story. So FRG is Family Readiness Group. Uh, when I was in the military, they're like, a, uh, they're like the uh, army spouses that stay back, or the military spouses that stay back, I should say. And uh, they form together, and they, they provide information to each other and support. They're a really great group. Um, but when I went overseas, unfortunately, there was, an act, there was a miscommunication. Uh, the FRG really shouldn't be contacting family and members of soldiers and telling them about uh, firefights and things. Uh, well, we had a firefight, and we were on blackout. We weren't able to communicate outside of the base. And the FRG went and called my family. They called my mom and told her there was a bloodbath and all this types of stuff. And my mom was freaking out, and I had no idea. You know, so I, and I was on blackout. We were on blackout. We couldn't call anybody for weeks. Um, so 
yeah, you know, like it's just it's not a good thing to be able to contact your family, contact the family of soldiers, be able to get information. I want that information secured. Um, so, uh, who cares about this data? We talked about that. You know, predators, police are targets. Uh, we talked about the nuclear power plant being able to resolve the information. It's not good. Uh, what would I do about it? Uh, first and foremost, I would plead with Facebook, please, for the love of God, why are you making everything public by default? When somebody signs up for Facebook, it should be private by default. They should have to opt in to make it public. I don't know why it's not, but that's, it is what it is. If all they have to do is flip a switch and 99% of this goes away. Uh, but you know what? It's not entirely Facebook's fault. You know, they're a business and people opt in to use it. So people should be smart enough to make it private. Uh, the one thing I really do have a problem with, though, is the federal government uh, and the state governments releasing all of our information. Like, that shouldn't be a thing. And when I spoke to the uh, CIO of the Secretary of State, I'm pretty sure it was CIO, I don't know, uh, Secretary of State of Ohio, uh, he told me that the reason that these things are available are because of outdated laws. Uh, the laws are in place that the voter records have to be public. So they made them public. And they can't just say, hey, this is a bad idea. We shouldn't do this because it's the law. Um, and I, 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 I empathize with that. I get where he's coming from. I don't blame them. They're just doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, I do think that we need to change these laws, though. So uh, we need to get more word out there that these things are available. Also, you know, just because I get a traffic ticket or I buy a house or I buy a car or I license my dog, that doesn't mean I'm opting in to have big data be able to farm my government data. Like, I don't know why. I, I don't know if the government's doing this willingly, knowingly, or unknowingly, but they're really selling us out to all these marketing firms. Like, my, my identity should, I only get one of them. You know, unless I, unless I, I'm a, you know, I turn state witness and I get, <laughs> I get in the protection program, I only get one identity. So it should be my choice on whether or not it gets put out there or not. And the government is stripping us of that uh, capability by just releasing this information. Uh, so I definitely think we need to change these laws. It's not specific to Ohio. I just use Ohio because that's where I live and I want to pick on them. Um, so here's the summary. One, you can't opt out of the internet. If you put it on the internet, it's out there. I think that's on a, a famous shirt somewhere. <laughs> if you put it on the internet, it's out there forever uh, and it is public. Um, voting, getting tickets, owning a dog, buying a house, things like that, it, it shouldn't be opting into big data. And the laws definitely need to catch up. We need to do this. Uh, if the people don't say something, um, it's never going to change. And that was kind of why I chose to put this information out there and this tool out there. The source code is on my GitHub. Uh, I really hope that everyone goes and downloads it, makes your own modules. Uh, go build a LinkedIn module. Go build a Google module. Uh, scrape everything. Uh, hack all the things. You know, Make it awesome. Share it with me. I'll, I'll echo it back out and see if I can add more. Uh, I would really love to collaborate on this. I'm going to continue developing this. Uh, I'm going to be presenting this again in a few months at DerbyCon. I'm going to be doing a 2.0. So we're going to have even more modules in here. Right now, uh, it's just Facebook and people. Uh, but I want to get LinkedIn. A um, whole bunch of fun stuff. Uh, that's my blog. I post all types of random tech stuff on there. I'm studying for my OSCP. So every now and then you'll see me post VulnHub VM cracks on there. And uh, there's my GitHub and my Twitter. And I'll open the floor for questions. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So uh, originally, I wanted to do it in Python uh, or some language I could do in uh, uh, multi-platform. But I ended up opting for C Sharp. Sorry. I'll try and port it one day. We'll see. That, that was my next question. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll be porting it. Yeah, I'll, I'll be trying to port it. I mean, you could run it in mono. It should work. I don't know. We'll see. I, I'll, try and, I'll try and run it in mono and see if it works. I don't see why it wouldn't. Yes? What is the next step for this research? So the next step for the research is I want to be able to go to Starbucks and sit down and uh, resolve addresses of people around me based on packet sniffing. Um, so that's, it's an idea. I need more modules. Uh, originally, I wanted to do it with Facebook because I was hoping that I could abstract their uh, profile out of the uh, Git parameters, but it's all TLS, so I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, there might be other ways. We'll see. Yes?
Yeah, that's a great question. So they, uh, when I was originally doing my research on privacy and trying to opt out of everything, I started with Spokio and White Pages and all those and worked my way up. Um, they're so successful because they're getting all their information from pretty much the same spot. Uh, they're all buying services from like Intellisys. I think, I think it's Intellisys. I think that's their name. Um, they're, they're buying their data from big companies like that. And those big companies are going, you can opt out of them, but guess what? They're going to the voter database and the traffic violations. They're going to public things that you can't opt out of. So eventually you hit a point where there's no more opting out. They're taking things they're allowed to take and they're doing connections very similar to what I'm doing, I would imagine. So yeah, unfortunately there's no getting away from it. Any other questions? Yes. No, so I looked into getting more states, but um, I wanted to be, I wanted to focus in on it, doing as much damage as I could as opposed to collecting as much data. This can be applied to every state because the voter database, uh, it's the same, as far as my understanding, it's the same format for every single state. So I use the Ohio database. So in the tool, um, I, I put this in here. Uh, I didn't talk about it, but it's in the tool. Uh, in the settings, you can go in here and set like your people API key. So if you have like a real people API key, like one you pay for, you can put it in there. Um, you just put your connection string in there uh, for your database, what state you're doing. That's the, uh, that'll be the state that we look for. And then your state or your table name, and it'll just kind of all work. What's that? Uh, that's a, it's a demo key. It's a demo key. I, I register, so whenever I do this demo, um, I go to Yandex, I create a fake email, and then I go register a people, a free account for people. It takes like 10 seconds and you get 30, I think it's like 30 uh, queries for 30 days or 15 days or something like that. So you can, you can do it over and over and over again. If you write a script or a tool to create accounts for you, you can just get a bunch of accounts, but uh, I didn't go that far. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, how did you arrive at the rates uh, for the confidence level? Yeah, so um, that took some time. Uh, it was totally arbitrary. I don't want anybody to think I'm not a data scientist. I'm not a data analyst. I have no idea what I'm doing. I just went in there and I tweaked it until I was getting really confident results and it just worked. So uh, I'm sure there are much better ways to do it. And if anybody has any ideas, please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to work with you and come up with something that I can say this works because of proof, you know, and uh, right now it's, I, I, I ran some, some large scale tests, uh, you know, like 1,000, 2,000 people, which by the way, you can do, you can just query over and over and over again on Facebook forever. Um, so I, I ran some large scale tests with like everybody in my city and uh, it was probably about 50 to 60% accurate if you consider a 80% or above confidence score, or at a 0.8 or above, I don't want to say percent because it's not percent, a 0.8 or above is their confidence score. It's like a 50, 60, 70% in their uh, accuracy. Uh, if you lower that to a 0.7, you get much higher, like uh, 80% accuracy. Uh, so yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely a, a viable means of finding people, but it's probably not the best. Yes? That's a great question. Um, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that doing talks like this, coming to the you know, biggest hacker conference in the world and making, the, making a, a stink about it, I'm hoping that that will, that will bring some attention to the problem. I, I would love to work with uh, the state, the government. Uh, I've reached out to them. I, I reached out to the, uh, the Ohio um, IT department. I told them about this. But like I said, they kind of shrug at you. So they're like, it's the law. What do you do? So you have, to, you have to get it put on the ballot, you have to get people to vote it, you know, to vote to change it, and it, that's it. From another talk, uh, there was a data scientist working with someone in Germany, mm -hmm. and teamed up with a journalist, and they were talking about how the journalist caught the politician on camera when they showed them a demo like this of their own data. Oh yeah, nice. You know, it's funny you mentioned that. I actually did reach out to some uh, local news outlets in Ohio, and uh, I, a lot of news acres, they don't use their real name for obvious reasons. They'll use like uh, aliases. So uh, I sent a couple anchors their their target profiles and hoped that that would, uh, you know, get them to respond to me, but it didn't work. So I, I'll definitely do that, though. I, I'm going to continue pushing on this. This is definitely something I believe in. I believe in it for a while. Um, it's a good cause. It just sucks that, you know, the way to get the word out there is that you have to kind of, you know, you have to drop, 
drop information on people, but that's the only, pissing people off is the only way you're going to get anything changed. Otherwise, um, you know, you're going to get people that say, who cares? You know, what's somebody going to do with my, my Facebook profile? You know, who cares? Well, you know, if you work for a, a critical infrastructure, then they can use it to fish you, you know, targeted phishing campaigns. They know you like the Browns, which is really rare, but, you know, they, they know you like, you know, they know you like X, Y, or Z, you know, so they can, they can make very targeted phishing campaigns. They saw you posted, you know, that you went to Starbucks someplace, so now they're going to go and try and rip your company's RFID card off of you because they know where you go, or uh, it's, the, the opportunities are limitless. Yes? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they are or not. I hope they are. Uh, but at the same time, you run. I, I also empathize with Facebook. Uh, they they have this issue where, um, you know, they nothing should be censored. You know, they want everything to be free and open, and I believe in that. Um, but at the same time, you don't want people posting videos of people getting their heads cut off. So, like, there's a there's a fine line you have to draw, and there's a lot of work they have to put into um, making the place safe for everyone. So I don't know if they're doing that research. I hope they do. We'll see. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you for coming. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.